Okay, so my teacher, like growing up, like impacted my life. He made me want to do good in school. He made me want to excel. And like following that, my dad's a teacher. My dad teaches in Compton Unified School District, and that's in Los Angeles. And he deals with a lot. He has parents that don't really participate. He has kids that don't really speak English because the majority of his students, um, Spanish is their first language. So my dad has to work a lot under different circumstances, you know? And that makes me like think, like, I wonder if I could do that. Like, if, could I be a teacher? You know, like, the thought has crossed my mind growing up. And he always says, you know, I'm too old for this shit, you know? <laughs> I don't get paid enough. And that made me think, like, teachers really don't get paid enough for how hard they work. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Teachers not being paid enough because of who knows what reason, you know? But teachers really do impact your lives. Throughout your life, you may have bad teachers that, you know, you hate, you can't stand them, you know, you don't want to go to their class, you ditch their class because, you know, forget that guy, forget that girl, you know? You just don't want to go. And, you know, even when you have good teachers, sometimes you don't want to go. But, you know, the teachers that do stand out are the ones that, you know, have impacted you in some way. You know, they have helped you get through class knowing you're struggling or, you know, you're having a bad day and they pull you aside and talk to you on an understanding of your situation. And I think that's a big part of what we need to see, the bigger picture, that teachers aren't getting paid enough. Um, Amy Wilkins of Education of Trust says that we're not going to have better teachers unless we pay them more. And that's really, that's really true, you know. Teachers are getting more lenient, they don't care. And with that, they're students, you know. Students in the class that have bad attitudes, that are sitting in the back, they don't care. They're on their phone, they're sleeping. There's so many different things that contribute to te why teachers have bad attitudes. And I think that us as students should change, you know. We sit there and we have an attitude. We come in tired because we stayed up too late trying to do an assignment. Or, you know, we're just, we don't care because, you know, it's our choice. We have to pay for the class now, so why do we care if we don't go? It's, our, it's on us. So I think that that's a big part of it, too. But also, you know, there's that misconception that teachers only work seven hours, eight hours, but that's not true. They work after grading, creating slides, tests, you know, they're doing all of these different things that contribute to them. And I think that the whole, the whole idea that teachers only do this minimal amount of work, they don't. They work after hours, and they don't get paid enough for that. And they have to pay out of pocket for supplies, you know, tissues for the classroom. I mean, you don't see tissues right now, but you know what? <laughs> like, growing up, there was tissues in the classroom, you know, some teachers brought candy, pencils, you know. There was different things that teachers had, and we took that for granted, you know. There's, New York Times says that um, most teachers have to get secondary jobs because they can't meet needs ends with just one job because they're not getting paid enough. And I think that's really sad that someone that's creating teachers, someone that's creating engineers, these teachers are creating, you know, these new jobs for students, you know, they're leaving an impact. Even if they're bad, even if they're negative, they're still impacting your life in some way, you know. You can have a bad teacher and you could take something from out of it still, you know. You can change, you can say, hey, I don't want to be like that. You know, I want to be like this because, you know, they left this impact on me, they left this stamp on me, so I don't want to be like that. And I think that you need to see that you're to blame. I mean, I don't want you to think that, oh, I have to put this teacher, you know? But like, you really need to realize that you can make a teacher good, you can make a teacher negative. Your attitude affects a lot, and I think that teachers in general do need to get paid more because, you know, like my dad, my dad has been paying off bills for when he went to school, and I think that if he got paid more, maybe he wouldn't have that problem. So just take that into consideration when you go to class. Like, could you handle being a teacher and not getting paid enough? Thank you. I feel like.
<laughs> Uriel, some words, please. <laughs> um, I liked how you connected the, the story of your dad with the, your topic, which is teachers should get paid more. I think that was really effective. Um, and then throughout your presentation, you didn't like preview the structure, but I think that, um, through points like uh, the way students act and the way they should act. Uh, I feel like you could have done like a problem solution kind of thing. I think that would have helped a little bit. And then um, your gestures and stuff, they were, they were really good. I didn't see a problem. But overall, it was really good. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I like the attention device. That's fine. I'm talking about a teacher who inspired you and then also using your dad's experience as uh, an illustration. That works fine. Uh, the idea that teachers don't get paid enough, that's okay for, yeah, I mean, you got an audience that's probably sympathetic here. Uh, I think you could get a little bit more proof on those sorts of things. I mean, you, in essence, say you had a, a vague reference to a quote that said most teachers have to get a second job. I'm going, well, let's get some statistic on this. What's the average teacher get paid? Uh, how much, what's their workload like? How, let's compare their, pair, their pay to some other jobs that people think of as being important. And, and, and you can make an argument, I think, a lot stronger with that kind of information. Uh, the, the extra workload, I think the use, using your father's experience would be a good way to do this. But you mentioned how you have to, how the teacher has to work outside the classroom grading things. And you could say, you know, the average teacher might be in the classroom six hours a day on campus seven hours a day but they work 10 to 12 hours a day and I know that uh, you know here's a statistic that says that but forget the statistic for a second my father spends four hours every night looking at homework assignments from his classes uh, writing comments on papers that students have turned in filling in paperwork for them to get uh, assistance if they you know if we've got uh, I used to know all these terms because I heard them all the time. Uh, the individual evaluation, EIP, no, IEP, I, I can't remember. The assessment, individual assessment pro plan, IEP, I can't remember what it is. You know, all, this, all the paperwork that has to be done to get a student extra assistance. So if somebody needed speech therapy or if they needed tutoring or if they have dyslexia or there's an issue with uh, ADD and they need some extra assistance. Teachers are the first line that gets all that done and that's a lot of stuff that people don't see. I, I think you've got uh, the right idea for an argument. It's a little undercooked. All right? uh, it needs a few more ingredients to make it to work a little bit better. You did have a couple of quotes that you put into the presentation. I appreciated that. I think your research was um, basic and it needs to be more elaborate. Uh, presentation issues, I, I would agree with you, you, and we've talked about this before, you're not having any problems speaking to an audience. You look at us, you're engaged, your gestures are uh, involved. Uh, I don't see anything that's so worrisome about that. It's content. Content is where you need to, to work a little bit more. <coughs> I did notice a catchphrase. I didn't start counting. I thought about starting to count, but you finished pretty quick. Um, you know was your catchphrase in this presentation. Yeah, you had, a, you had a whole bunch of them, and I said, oh, I better underline that and write that down. I didn't start counting them. But you can do that. You can watch your video and see how many times you say you know in the presentation. It's a five-minute presentation. It's not quite a five-minute presentation, and I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we had at least a dozen, maybe a few more. All right, thank you.